Greetings and salutations and welcome to the Brahma Bulletin. Thank you all so much for joining this week. I greatly appreciate you one and all. And now, this week's stories. More Brahmas have made NFL practice squads. Headline, Titans signed running back Jacques Patrick to practice squad. Patrick, 26, wound up going undrafted out of Florida State back in 2019. He did not catch on with the NFL team, but was drafted by the Tampa Bay Vipers of the XFL for the 2020 season. Patrick signed a three-year deal with the Bengals. He was on and off their roster before having brief stints with the 49ers, Panthers, and Ravens. Patrick returned to the Bengals last year, but was among the team's roster cuts coming out of the preseason. He had a stint in the XFL for the 2023 spring season before landing with the Broncos in May. Denver cut him after just a month, however, and he caught on with the Titans during training camp. Headline, Bengals add quarterback Reed Sinnott to practice squad. The Bengals are adding a familiar face to the quarterback room amid uncertainty surrounding Joe Burrow's health. Cincinnati signed Reed Sinnott to the practice squad to give the Bengals additional depth in case Burrow is unavailable from Monday's game against the Los Angeles Rams due to a calf injury. Sinnott's addition comes one day after Will Greer, Cincinnati's number three quarterback, left the Bengals practice squad to join the New England Patriots active roster. This is the second time this season Sinnott signed with the Bengals to backfill the roster. In July, Sinnott joined the Bengals after Burrow initially strained his right calf at the beginning of training camp. The former University of San Diego quarterback was number three on the Bengals depth chart while Burrow recovered from his injury. The Brahmas have claimed the rights of two new players. Both are from the IFL's Quad City Steam Wheelers. Let's welcome wide receiver C.J. Windham and offensive lineman Joe Crawl. They are both wonderful additions to the 2-1-0 Ranchero. And now, news from around the XFL. Major news has recently been announced. News that could shape the future of spring football. Headline, breaking, XFL and USFL in advanced talks for potential merger ahead of 2024 season. In a significant development that has the potential to reshape the landscape of spring football, the XFL and USFL are reportedly in advanced talks to merge. This comes as a strategic move to forge a stronger front as NFL alternatives, leveraging the strengths and assets of both leagues, according to insiders familiar with the matter, as reported by Axios. The envisioned merger, described as a, quote, merger of equals, is set to require regulatory approval. If everything goes as planned, football enthusiasts could witness the fusion of these two powerhouses before the onset of the 2024 season. What is the new name? In the ever-changing landscape of spring football, we have potentially game-changing news. USFL Enterprises, who holds all of the USFL-related trademarks, seem to be securing the infrastructure for what could be a new league, referred to as the NSFL, or the National Spring Football League. What does this mean for the XFL, and could USFL Enterprises be behind a complete takeover and branding? Adding fuel to the speculative fire, there has been a filing for the National Spring Football League trademarks as of September 22, 2023, with as many as 22 different variations of the name. It's not hard to link the dots here, considering that USFL Enterprises has been consistently proactive in their business moves. Will there be hub cities? Recent speculation from Neil Stratton's newsletter, Inside the Leagues, has stirred the XFL-USFL merger pot once again. Stratton is hearing that the XFL-USFL merged league may forego home cities for each team and instead opt for six hub locations. The bottom line right now is that we just do not know any answers. 
there are speculation rumors running rampant all over the interwebs. We don't know if there's going to be 10 teams, 12 teams, all 16 teams. Are they going to be in hub cities? Are they going to be playing their home cities? Is it going to be the XFL, the USFL, the USXFL, the NSFL? Who knows? As of right now, we just don't know anything. But I am keeping a close eye on this story. So subscribe to this channel and ring that notification bell to keep up to date on all things regarding this developing story. The worst kept secret in football has finally been confirmed. The Indoor Football League is proud to announce the addition of the San Antonio Gunslingers for the upcoming season. San Antonio's addition to the IFL's Western Conference, as well as the re recent Eastern Conference addition of the Jacksonville Sharks, confirmed there will be 16 teams and evenly balanced conferences in 2024. The Rackler family and the Gunslingers are a great addition to the IFL, said IFL Commissioner Todd Tryon. This is a team that is built the right way with good people and will immediately compete at the top of the IFL. The San Antonio Gunslingers are entering their fourth year as a franchise, having spent their last two seasons as part of the National Arena League. The Gunslingers tout a remarkable fan base, powerful partnerships, and reputable ownership, all of which will be a great addition to the Indoor Football League. With any championship caliber organization, it starts at the top, and I truly believe we have hand-selected some of the finest coaches in indoor football. With multiple championships under our belts, we as a coaching staff are coming together to bring elite talent to the San Antonio Gunslingers. <laughs> New Sheriff Tom Manis has not wasted any time rounding up his posse. Headline. Head coach Tom Manis announces 2024 coaching staff. Head coach, obviously Tom Manis. Assistant head coach and offensive coordinator, James Fuller. Offensive line coach, Lee Johnson. Co-defensive coordinator, Chris McKinney. Defensive line coach, Jeremy Richardson. The missions fell short of their mission. They lost the Texas League Division Championship game two games to one to the Amarillo Sod Poodles. They lost the last two games at home, of all things. Well, the season may be over for this year, but we always got next year. A couple of SAFC players have received some accolades. Headline. San Antonio FC midfielder Jorge Hernandez named to USL Championship Team of the Week. Hernandez's assist in the 71st minute not only moved him into sole possession of the top spot in the league, but also put him into a tie for the most assists in a single season in SAFC history. Still in his first season with SAFC, Hernandez's total is already good for the fifth most career assists in club history. Hernandez finished the draw at Colorado Springs with seven chances created while winning nine of ten duels and two of three tackles. The midfielder completed 26 of 35 passes as well, bringing his season pass in accuracy to 72.5%. The percentage is the second most on the team among players with over 100 passes. Headline, San Antonio FC forward Nathan Fogasha named to USL Championship Team of the Week. Fogasha scored and assisted in the 3-3 draw after joining the team last week on loan from the Portland Timbers. Fogasha previously spent the 2021 season with the San Antonio SAFC, leading the team with 11 goals. The forward finished with three chances and created and two shots on frame in the draw with two tackles and a blocked shot on the defensive end. But wait, there is more from this young man. Headline, San Antonio FC forward Nathan Fogasha named to USL Championship Team of the Week. Fogasha has been named to the USL Championship Team of the Week for the second straight week. Fogasha opened the scoring on Saturday, finding the back of the net in the sixth minute. Then, in the 61st minute, Fogasha assisted on Santiago Patino's goal that made it 4-0. 
the Brazilian completed 95.2% of his 21 passes and defensively made a clearance, interception, and a block shot. In just 159 minutes played across three matches this season, Bogasha already has two goals and two assists. The mission to defend our title will soon begin as SAFC has clinched a playoff spot. We are only one point behind Sacramento for the division lead with just a couple games left, so there still is a chance for us to get that division title as well. This week, Brahma in the spotlight. Defensive lineman Armonte Carey from the IFL's Northern Arizona Wranglers. Headline, Northern Arizona Wranglers signed defensive lineman Armonte Carey. Carey, 6'5", 320 pounds, known as the Big General, is an established defensive lineman in the indoor game. Most recently, Carey played football in 2022 with the Bismarck Bucks of the IFL. Carey started his professional career in 2015 with the San Jose Sabercats in the Arena Football League. After the 2015 season, Carey took a hiatus from football and eventually came back to play for the Orlando Predators of the National Arena League in 2019. Carey played for the Jersey Flight of the NAL in 2021 before finishing the season back with the Predators. Carey is originally from Detroit, Michigan, where he attended Romulus High School. Carey has always had a love for sports growing up as he played basketball and football before getting into organized sports. And that's our Brahma in the Spotlight. Armonte Carey, offensive lineman from the IFL's Northern Arizona Wranglers. And that's all for this week. If you found this video informative and entertaining, please click that like button below and consider subscribing to this channel to keep up to date on all things San Antonio Brahmas. If you're listening on Spotify, would you mind hitting that follow button and would you consider rating this channel? I greatly appreciate you one and all. And now I think it's time for this Brahma to be put out to pasture. At least until the next episode. Until then, San Antonio, horns forward.